Hi, we're now going to create a logo for our site. We're going to create a word logo, a very simple one, and we're going to use Photoshop. We've already set the site structure up in Dreamweaver. The next thing we want to use is Photoshop to create a logo. So open up Photoshop. Uh, Photoshop, there it is. I tend to, when I first have it, and I know I'm going to use it frequently, normally right click, go to options, and keep it in the dock so that next time I'm looking for it on a Mac, it's there in the dock. Now Photoshop will open up and it's used to, cre to create wonderful images and wonderful banners and all sorts of, and do all sorts of things with images. So when once the Photoshop desktop has opened, we need to set the stage, we need to set the canvas so that we can actually create a logo. We're going to create a logo 150 pixels wide by 150 pixels um, tall. So what you need to do first of all is to go to file, once Photoshop is open, go to file and get a new document open. The new document will open like this, and the, f um, and the first thing we need to do is set a title. So we're going to create a logo. So this is going to be um, World of Music Logo. And it's the first thing, you give it a name. The next place you need to look is ensure that when you go down to width and ensure that it's pixels, and ensure the height is in pixels. And then set the relevant sizes. So here we want 150 wide by 150 high. We're leaving the resolution to seven um, pixels per inch. And the background we should leave as white. Once you've made those settings, the name, the width, the height, leave the d resolution as it is and leave the background and just simply click OK. So there lies the first thing. Your canvas is ready. And you need to also look at this area of the screen, which is the layers. You can widen it if you need to. The current layer you have is the background layer, which is the foundation of the images we're about to create. Now next, you're going to have to go into the browser because we need to download a font that will give this logo, word logo, a funky look. So open up your browser and go into look for 1001 1001 fonts these are free fonts that you can download and use in your website so if you press enter you've got 1001 fonts let's have a look let's make it visible it's a nice nice little website now basically it allows you to search for fonts that you can use for whatever you are doing on your website and your design and it gives you fonts that may be relevant to whatever you're doing. So for instance, I'm looking for fonts to do with a music poem music site. If I click this, it will show me all the various fonts that I could possibly use. You look down and figure out, are any of these relevant? Now I've got about 22 pages. I'm not scrolling through 22 pages. So the next best thing is to use their font categories. You can select font categories to get fonts that are relevant to what you're doing. So I'm doing something to do with music in a, and I want it to be funky and, and um, kind of 1970s retro style. So I will look for things like uh, 1970s. I'll look for, oh look, a whole load of options come up here. So I'm looking for funky, um, retro. And as I click each category, you'll notice that the range of fonts available for me to choose changes. So I'm gonna go for this font, the phenotype font, and I'm gonna download it. So there we go, down it goes. So I'm downloading the Fino font. Just to be sure how quick that there it is. So you can download it. Now once you've got your font, you can minimize the browser and go back into your um, Photoshop. So you're back in Photoshop. So what you want to do is you need to go back um, to where you downloaded that font. So it should be somewhere in your downloads. So go into your to your, wherever your downloads are, yeah? And you've got to install that font before you can use it. So I downloaded a font, where is it, where is it? It's Phenotype. I downloaded it today, 
So normally I just use date. Today is uh, February. So February, I think the day is, ooh, where is it? It's my downloads, it's there. Can't find it. Where did it go? Dropped it. Okay, you need to find your font. And I can't find my font, which is strange because it should be where it should be. Okay, let me go back to the browser. Check downloads here. Oh, it's called Disco 3. Always try and remember the name. So mine is called Disco 3. So this is where the font is. Go in and open the font. Now the file you're looking for is the TTF. Double click that file and it will open this area. It will open a window like this. Now, whatever your font name is, it will appear here, and then the style of the font will be visible there. And all you need now to all you need to do now is to click install. And that will install the font on your system. Problem may have been found with some fonts during the navigation. Please review. Install checked. Okay. So what it's doing is it's installing the font there. So it's now installed it on my system. Now, it should be a similar process in the Windows, but as we're working on Mac, this is what we're doing. So once you've installed the font, it should appear here in your font list. So that font was called Disco. So I'm looking for a font called Disco. D-I-S-C-O, and there it is, Disco Phenotype. Okay, so now I can use it. So that's the font I want to use. So what I want to type here, because it's a word logo, I'm only going to use the initials, so that's W-O-M. That's the initials for my world of music. You see how, there it is, W-O-M. So what I want to do is, this is going to be a very simple, very, very simple word logo. So once I, in fact, hold on, let me go back a bit. Once I've selected the font, you will now select the text tool which is this one here once you've selected the text tool click on the canvas and type the, the, the initials of whatever for your logo so in my case it's w o m you can move the logo if i move the cursor here it's 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 ready for me to type text and it's like a long line with two heads two ends here it's an, a single dark arrow head when you see the single dark arrow head with the with the four arrows crossed four arrow it means that you can move whatever object you have selected so i can move it my word down a bit so that it fits more snugly into the area for the logo so you can see i'm moving it around so i want it to sit about there now you can also use the align tool uh, the transform tool so if i go to edit and i click free transform i can change the proportions of this 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 set of letters by pressing down the shift key and going to any corner corner i can reduce it slightly because it's a bit big and then then i can go to the edge um, i can reduce it slightly once i've finished reducing or changing the size I can then click this tick box and again select it and then by clicking on it I select it and I can move it you know into the right place up down just making sure it fits the way I want it to fit so I've got the word logo the letters are now in and ready for the next part just make sure I finish the whole process by clicking done as I said this is a very simple very very simple word logo so my colors, the house style for my website, which is basically the set of colors I'm using are black, white, and red. So I need black as the background. So in order to add a back, black, black background to this logo, I need to add another layer. So I come down here and I click a new layer. And you can see the new layer here. I'm going to rename it. Just double click on it and give it a name. So I'm going to call it. BKGRD background and then press enter so it's got a name make sure this layer is selected then come over to the shape tool the rectangular shape tool click it and move on to the canvas and draw um, a shape that about fits the same size as the logo 
So mine is black, it's already black there, and you can select the color from the properties inspector. So if you come up here, you see there's the property if you open it. It's the property for this box that's selected. As you can see, it's currently black, but if I pick red, it becomes red. If I pick blue, it becomes blue, pink. So I'm gonna select black as my background because that's the one, that's part of the house style I have. And then I'm gonna close the property inspector. Now at the moment, I'm going back to the select tool. Now at the moment, as you can see, I can't see anything else. Now if you ever encounter this situation, it simply means the background is right on top and it needs to move back. So in order to move the background back, you click in the layers area, which is this area here, and you click on the background layer and you move it down below the text. See, just like this, see? As I've moved it down, you notice that the image now pops up properly. Um, it's there, so you've got your text on top, your background, and then the canvas down. So basically, this is a simple logo. It's now ready. So it's now ready to be saved. So go to File, Save As. I'm going to save as. This is going to be W. O M World of Music Logo PSD. It should be saved in the images file. Now this image file that is pointing to here should be is just going to be the standard image file. Although you could go into World of Music and you could also try and select inside World of Music the images file. But for now we'll just put it in images and we'll move it later. Click save. Because you don't know what you're using it for, it's best to let the system maximize compatibility. So leave that checked as it is and click OK. So that's the first stage. So you've now created the logo and you've saved it. Now in order to use it in Dreamweaver or in any other application, you need to export it so that it's in image format, which is either as a JPEG or as a PNG. To export this particular logo, click File. Sorry, click export file, export, and you can export as. Now, most most um, systems tell you what they want, so I'm going to export this as a JPEG. So click export as. Wait a little minute, and the export as dialog box comes up. You need to select JPEG, the quality you want the same. Make sure it's the same width, height, um, everything else you can leave. You could have copyright, but that's at a later date. And then all you need to do is export. It's going to export it to the same image folder and just click export. And it's exported it. So if you go to images, you'll see you've got the logo in a JPEG format, which, is, which enables you to use it outside of um, Photoshop and in any other application. And then you've got the Photoshop.psd, um, which allows you to re-edit it in Photoshop or use it in Photoshop. So that's how you create a very simple logo. Now, once the logo is created, you can now, and you've exported it as a JPEG, it's ready to be used in Dreamweaver. I hope this helps. Try and build your own logo in a, word logo in a similar way and get back to me. Thank you.